From, from the 2,915 total votes cast, 200, two, He's nervous. Leave him alone. Of the 2,915 total votes cast, 2,838 expressed a preference. That's it. in a 
a good way. But again, <coughs> congratulations to Trendy for getting the role back. Kevin Stanley, he him, uh, as a question of privilege affecting the assembly and all members, in fact. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move that the administrator be instructed to destroy the ballots. Is this going to look part of the ballots? Uh, is there any objection? Is there any objection? Seeing no objection, the administrators are ordered to destroy the uh, vote portion of the ballots. Uh, proceed as a presentation by Chang Jun. Hello, Chair. I'm Wrestling Chen, the coach of the Chen Du Bi teams, thanking and the team supporting Winnipeg for the wonderful rights. Um, okay, now let's, uh, let's pass it through the rails. Could we have a couple copies up here too? Thank you. Hello everyone. After those days hard work, I finally get the honor to deliver the speech here. It has been four years since Chen Du started to speak for the World Cup, and this journey has carried the hope of countless Chinese fans. For Chen Du fans, this is a once in a decade opportunity. We want to welcome you all to China. This is a special and vital moment for us all. It is a new adventure for all of us. It will be a different kind of World Cup, but it will still be a World Cup that you will still recognize as part of these traditions that started in 1939, when the world was a very different place. I want to salute the efforts of the team supporting Winnipeg and also Memphis. It has been a long journey. You gave us some good competition, and I may say that we have learned some things from you as well, such as how to run a good farm table, how to build a community, and how to do a good presentation, and so on. I hope that many of you will be ready and willing to join our team. I hope that we can welcome all of you to Chengdu and be friends together. In fact, 
we welcome everyone here to Chengdu. We prefer it you come in person, but for those who can't, a full stream of virtual program will be part of the convention. Our membership of faith has been settled. The supporting faith is fifteen dollars. The attending attendance is one hundred dollars, and the virtual is eight dollars. And of, of course, those who support us will have a great discount that we will we will go public pub, public on my on our website later. We now know that a virtual convention can expand our ideas of what a work path can be and give us enough great chance to build a global community of science fiction fans. Next year, we will send a team to Shikong to learn more about how to run a world cup and the precise tradition of world cup. We want to have a convention that fans around the world can enjoy together. The guests of honor of our World Cup is Robert Sawyer, the author of Fresh Forward. Sagi Lukiyaniho, the author of Night Watch Theory. Liu Zixin, the author of Three Body Progress. We will continue to update the list of guest of owners. Of course, we also have a temp tempting explanation plans for our membership, including a student discount plan, a 3,000 uh, 3, kilometer fan discount plans. They will be updated and announced on our website gradually. Our website address is on the flyer in your hands. <coughs> we are setting up an executive team, a team of experienced foreign staff with the multiple staffs, including co chair, vice chair, senior advisor, head of Hugo administration division, media man manager, site selection administration manager, suppose, and so on. You can also say on the players. Since we plan to hold a Grand Science Faction Commission, we still have many jobs to do and we will gradually post them online. We welcome you to, want to be a volunteer and apply, apply to these positions many times. We plan to hold the World Cup in August 2023 with the joint offer of above mentioned teams. The scale of the Commission will be 10,000 members offline and 19,000 members online. Chengdu is a welcoming city. Among other things, it is ranked as the most LGBT-friendly city in China. We hope that you will come with open minds and bring the whole world to welcome next year. Thank you. People silence any phones or mobile devices that are making noise. That's a good point. Uh, so normally there's a period of questions. I don't know if you could come back up to the microphone. To, can, can you come back up to the microphone? Uh, so uh, we have like uh, eight or nine minutes on schedule for questions uh, for the Chengdu grid here. Yes. Her. Uh, what are the dates of your convention? Our, our convention's date is the August 23, 
so new people wouldn't know what to volunteer for? You already have me. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so on our website, um, there's uh, two places that you would be looking for that. So under the volunteer page, we have the volunteer form where you can fill it out and say what you're interested in, your skill sets, etc. cetera. Um, Alice Lawson, who is one of the co-chairs for London, is our uh, volunteers area head, and we're treating it a little bit almost like a like a job coaching kind of thing. So if we have folks who are like, I don't really know what I want to do, she's meeting with them to try to you know see about their interests and their skills and match them up appropriately. Also on the volunteer page, there's a list of some open positions. It is definitely not all of the open positions, and we are working to try to get a bunch of those up. Um, but then if you look at the um, I believe it's the About tab in the menu. There is a list of the committee, uh, which shows who is currently on the committee. Um, we, I don't think that we're listing open positions on there, though. But that's OK, because what we really, you know, we want people to tell us, this is the type of thing I'm interested in. And we want to match it. My philosophy as chair is um, to remember that this is actually a hobby. Um, it's a hobby with a million dollar plus budget, but it is a hobby. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, people should be having fun. So what I want is for the volunteers to take on something that they're excited about, that they're really interested in doing, that they're looking forward to, because we will inevitably hit some speed bumps, right? And. If you're excited about what you're doing, that's going to make it a lot easier to get over those speed bumps. We're very open, you know, if somebody takes on a job and they try it out and they're like, eh, not really for me, totally cool, right? We'll work with them, figure something else out. Real life happens, great. What can we do to support you? Do you need to step back? That's also okay. Because this is meant to be fun. Um, so 
So yeah, so there is information on the site. We'll take a look and see if we can maybe clarify some things. And like I said, I know we're trying to get some um, additional job descriptions up there, but if you are interested in working for us, we've got a great team. I am delighted to report that so far everybody is still speaking to each other. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, but we'd love to have you on board. Just fill out the form and, and we'll, start, we'll start talking to you. Helen, I have a question. Um, Linda Denneroff, what, what plans or contingencies are you making in case COVID still exists? Such a buzz though. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, so we are looking at it. Uh, we will definitely have a virtual component. Um, we don't entirely know what that's going to look like. We've been talking about it for the whole year. Um, we've been talking about it for all of 2021. But we really wanted to see kind of what would happen with this, uh, with this weekend, and see how it goes. We're going to be talking with, um, you know, with Mary Robinette. We're going to be talking with um, uh, Nathan, who's the virtual DISCON uh, division head, and basically getting a lot of feedback. We're also hiring within the virtual Shycon 8 division. So if that is something you are interested in. And this goes out particularly to internet people who maybe would, are not planning to attend ShyCon but still want a virtual piece. Please volunteer, we're gonna need you. Um, so there will be that. As far as our actual like uh, public health policy, um, with regards to COVID, we are going to take a closer look at that in the spring. And the reason for that is because, you know, science and circumstances are changing so quickly. We could make a policy now and have to change it next week, you know? so. Um, Illinois and Chicago have been very good about following CDC guidelines, uh, and so obviously we'll be following whatever the, the science and Chicago and Illinois require. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay. Other questions? In the back. Oh, great. I have to bring you a microphone. <laughs> well, I'll go, because then I'll have to wait for the answer. <laughs> Uh, you might have to you back to you. Bill Walton, you know what my question is. No. Is that going to be your answer? Oh, okay. Um, Helen, I've heard rumors that George R. Martin will not be welcomed on program. Is that true? At this time, we have not picked anybody to be on program. Program applications and surveys have not gone out. It, it, is, an ans it is the answer to the question. We haven't picked anybody to be on program. And, as far, and I don't even know if Mr. Martin has put, filled in an applicant form, so I can't actually answer that. Our goal for program, though, is, is to and this has always been one of our goals, is we want to make sure that folks who have been historically marginalized have a voice at our convention, um, but that is not at the expense of other people who have been active in this fandom for a long time. So we're looking to find a balance. But you know, if, if folks are interested in being on program, fill out the program form. That's the, best, that's the first thing that we can tell you to do. Uh, from there, we can then make, we'll make decisions and we have a vetting process in the whole nine months. So. Okay. Here. I know the website says that hotel reservations hey, hey, hey. Cliff Dunn. I know the hotel re website, uh, yeah. I know the chi website says hotel reservations will open in early 2022. Do you have any idea of roughly when that'll be? Good question, thank you. Um, yeah, so for folks who need ADA rooms, I would encourage you to email access at shycon.org as soon as possible uh, so that you're on the list. Ru uh, reservations for folks needing ADA rooms will open in January, um, like mid-January if I recall. Um, I'm looking at my facilities deputy division head here. <laughs> um, oh, and there's my actual facilities division head, so you'll, they'll tell me if I'm wrong. Um, and then uh, reservations for everybody else will open in mid-February, I believe around like the 20th-ish, like right after Gallifrey. 
because my facilities division had super busy until after Gallagher. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we, we, decided, we decided to push it a little bit um, just because of how ridiculously busy a bunch of us are in January and February with local cons. So. Other questions? Okay, I think my work really is done now. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>
motion. This is a new constitutional amendment, so if passed this year, it will uh, need to be ratified uh, next year before it becomes effective. And uh, it becomes effective at the end of the, the next roll time. The debate time limit was set to 12 minutes for this item by the preliminary business meeting. Uh, so it replaces, it changes, it changes to uh, 3.8.6 in the Constitution. And the intent is to reduce the amount of series of the same dramatic presentation that can be finalists from two to one, uh, but to retain the existing restriction of uh, not more than two works by the same author before the It's just slightly more complicated than that as to what the current criterion are. Uh, that's the explanation provided. So uh, I, this is on page 34 of your agenda. Uh, and uh, basically, it uh, involves uh, adding a new sort of number, adding su numbered sub items, or restructuring 3.8.6 into numbered sub items. Uh, the current text is if there are more than two works in the same story category uh, that are episodes of the same dramatic presentation series or that are written works that have an author. Uh, uh, have an author for single author works or two or more common authors for co authored works uh, in common, only the two works in each category that have the most nominations shall appear. And uh, then there's a section that the, that the World Con shall make, World Con Committee shall make reasonable efforts to notify those who would have been finalists in the absence of this section to provide them an opportunity to withdraw. And for the purpose of this exclusion, works withdrawn or ignored. So this gets restructured with this change so that uh, <coughs> it says the, so the, uh, the provisions about uh, story category works having multiple authors is left as an item one. There's a new item two which says if there are multiple works in the best dramatic presentation short form category that are episodes of the same series, only the work that has the most nominations shall appear on the final ballot. That is to say only one and the remaining provisions about notification and so forth uh, remain. Uh, is there a debate on this uh, amendment to the Constitution? Question about this. Yes, uh, come to a microphone. Wait, you already recognize somebody. Well, but it depends what his question is. What is it, if you don't you need to be closer to a microphone. Okay. Since the, the story block D5 was passed and it will come free for wording, should the numbering now be in the first section of 386, 3.3.1, 3.3.6? Uh, that will get taken care of when I enter it into the Constitution. This was obviously printed before that passed, so don't worry about it. Okay. The Secretary is explicitly authorized to make such a numbering adjustment. Okay, thank you. I did that. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, so. Wait, wait, wait. He's already got somebody. somebody. I did. He was, I asked him to use the motion, and he has been recognized. Maybe the motion has the floor. You go. Do something. <laughs> you are speaking in four, correct? Thank you. My name is Mike. Thank you. My name is. Thank you. My name is Olaf Rothney. Meet him. I am one of the uh, people proposing this motion, and. Um, this is an attempt to diversify what we see on the ballot. There are some entries, some series that perennially are recognized with multiple nominations, and some uh, very worthy series fall by the wayside. Uh, a wider range of nominees would advantage 
uh, marginalized populations and marginalized creators inherently, uh, and um, diversifying what we see on the ballot can only help to strengthen the award. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Are there any speeches against? Correct. Her. I don't think this is a problem. What gets nominated is what the nominators think is worthy. Uh, and you have anthology series like, you know, Love, Death, and Robots, where the episodes have nothing to do with one another. Uh, and if the nominators think that the best things to get on the ballot are only from three series, that's what should be there. Is there a further speech in favor of the amendment? Moving on the question. Is there anybody who wishes to speak? Uh, Mika wishes to make a second speech. Is, is there a second for the polling question? Second. Uh, all those who wish to speak, please raise your hand. Uh, is there any objection to allowing one speech and then voting? You've got two people over there that need to speak. Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, we will then proceed to vote on the following question. All those in favor of following the question, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed? Uh, it's about evenly split, so the nays have, so it does not achieve the two-thirds necessary, and the question is not called. I recognize the, uh, uh, let's see, there, there. I believe when I asked for speeches, only the maker uh, asked for the floor, so this is always the second speech. Uh, again, I didn't see other people before that, so I can go ahead. Uh, in terms of anthology, hey, hold on. Name? Uh, Ola Brockney. Still. Um, for non-anthology series, if there are multiple episodes of the same series, if there are multiple episodes of the same narrative that are all Hugo worthy, perhaps it is more appropriate for that whole series to be in long term. As to the valid, very valid point about anthology series, uh, I think we could carve out uh, a, an exception for those, and I actually think it might be appropriate to refer this amendment to the Hugo Study Committee uh, for further discussion. Uh, if, if I am allowed to make a motion, I would like to make that motion. It has been moved. It's been moved and seconded to refer this amendment to the Hugo Study Committee, which we did continue at the preliminary business meeting. Is there any debate on whether it's advisable to refer to the committee or not? Seeing none, is there any objection? Mr. Chairman, I'll speak against it. Ah, okay. The, the maker of the motion had the chance to speak to this. He already did speak, I think. I guess so. Kevin Stanley, he can. Thank you. Kevin Stanley, he can. I think this is a pretty straightforward question. If there's a desire to carve out a separate exception for anthology series, that can be taken up by the Hugo Award Study Committee without referring this question to them. This body can answer this question right now, yes or no. I am opposed to sending this to the committee. Is there a speech in favor of sending it to the committee? Seeing no question. Uh, is, there any, is there anybody who wishes to speak to the motion to refer to the committee? Seeing nobody wishes to speak to that motion, we'll vote on the motion to refer it to committee. Uh, yeah. Right for Jim Kevin, Would you, you want to know what the current parliamentary situation is? Okay. The the main motion on the floor is F1, this constitutional amendment. Been moved and seconded to refer to the Hugo Study Committee. Nobody appears to wish to speak to that motion to refer to committee, so I was about to vote on the motion to refer to committee. Uh, there being a speech negative, that's obviously people opposed, so we will take a vote on referring F1 to the Hugo Study Committee. All those in favor of this referral, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed? I nays have it, and the motion is not referred to committee. Uh, the question reverts to the main motion, F1. Are there further 
uh, discussion will be the last speech on F1 was in favor. Is there a speech against F1? Dave Wallace, he, him, and um, I, I wanted to address an argument that was made uh, by the uh, uh, proposers that said basically series that get multiple nominations are more likely to um, win. And I believe that this confuses cause and effect. The reality is that having multiple nominations in, in the ballot makes it a little more challenging uh, for all of them to get on the ballot because of EPH. And in fact, what's likely to happen, th those series that do get multiple nominations are likely to do so because their nominations are more than just marginally finalists, but are in fact further along. I did in fact go back and look at the last three years of um, results. And uh, th this is mostly uh, the case. Uh, back in 2020, um, the Watchmen had, um, aside from Good Omens being pushed into the uh, long form category, but Watchmen had two episodes that were originally number two and number four, and became number one and number three after the elimination. Good Place had number three and number eight, which became two and seven, so that was just one. But and uh, and, and furthermore, the uh, the one that was um, in uh, number seven there uh, wound up with multiple times when it was put into the cage match because of EPA. Um, likewise, in number uh, in 2019, Good Place had uh, uh, two not in, in uh, number three and number five. This is in terms of total votes. And Doctor Who had a total of three, uh, two on the ballot, uh, three in the. Uh, Long results, number two, number four, number seven. 2018 is a little bit uh, different, but Good Place had the number one and number three places, um, and number three was in fact the winner. Uh, Doctor Who had one on the final list, but three in the long list, number four, number nine, and number 12. And the expanse is the one case of something that might have gotten on the ballot had this been in effect. It was in the number seven and number eight, and in fact under EPH, they got put into the case match against each other and number seven eliminated number eight. So by and large, I think it is not the case that uh, series are more likely to win because they are, or, or are more popular because they have multiple nominations, rather it's they have multiple nominations because they are more popular and the Hugo's being a popular vote thing. It's not unexpected that if a series is exceptionally popular, it's more likely to win. Thank you. Thank you. A uh, speech in favor of the amendment? Uh, I move to call the question. Second. Second. Oh. I had a question that's not a for or against, that it goes to the maker. I, I think we've had, we've had a motion to call the question. Uh, people should take that into account. She was trying to ask it earlier, I think. Sure. What is it? It wanted to can't hear you. One, sorry, Joni Brill Jackson. We, we are reducing one category to one. Why not also reduce the rich? That's some kind, of, it's some kind of debate or, or amendment or something. It's clear what the motion is. It was a question about the meaning of the motion or the situation I would allow it. But uh, we have a motion uh, seconded to call the question. All those who still wish to speak, please raise your hand. Seeing nobody, we will proceed to a vote on this amendment to the Constitution. All those in favor of item F1, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed? The nays have it, and F1 is defeated. Next item of business is F2. 30 days have. Honorable Chair, yes. question for privilege. Yeah. Kevin Stanley, he am. Honorable Chair, uh, I'm aware that the people watching this on live streaming are not members of this assembly directly, but they are members of WISPAS watching. 
Uh, I would like the chair to, I would like it to be noted that people have been complaining that they cannot figure out what's going on the, uh, and that for that purpose, can, is it correct to say they can find this whole document that I'm holding, the whole agenda document, on the this country website under what to do, and I believe Worcester and Hugo Awards and business meeting, and you can download the PDF of the entire agenda. Is that correct, Mr. Chair? It is, and not only that, somewhere back here I have a slide on which I have added the uh, URL. Thank you, sir. So, <laughs> I think I did that at least. Uh, okay, I can see. Well, it is linked from the whispers.org website. You can find it uh, by tracing down there. And it is also linked off of the Discon 3 business meeting site. And you can find it uh, there. I have been uh, trying to uh, read the motions in more detail so that you can at least hear what they are. I can't find it. I thought I added it in here. But uh, uh, that appears not to be the case. Um, There's also a request to keep the captions in frame. I'm not sure what that means, but social media is asking um, if they could keep the feed, if the feed could keep the captions in frame. I don't think we can control it. No, it oh, it. somebody here is controlling it. I don't know who. Maybe our voice will be heard. But okay. But, um, but okay. Yes, that's, it's uh, useful. That there's apparently a chat associated with the live stream, and that chat is maybe a good place to uh, find people reporting problems with the live stream. However, those people are not members of the assembly here, which have to be present in person. So we are moving on to item F2, 30 days half new business, which is on page 35 of the agenda and has a time limit of eight minutes as set by the preliminary business meeting. So this basically takes... Uh, what? Do you need permission to preside? Why? Oh. It's new to uh, I don't know. Anybody object to me presiding? No. No. That's it. Fine. Got it. <laughs> okay. You did it before. Yeah. Uh, this is taking text which is currently in the standing rules of the business meeting and moving them to the Constitution. That's the primary, the primary effect. So we would add a section 5.1.6 to the Constitution, a uh, short title, well, title for that section, which is not uh, normative, uh, deadline for submission of new business. And the actual text, which is controlling, says the deadline for submission of non-privileged new business and committee reports to the business meeting shall be 30, over paren, 3, 0, close paren, days before the first preliminary business meeting. Proposed agenda items may be withdrawn by the consent of all proposing members at any time of two weeks before the published deadline for submitting new business. A list of such withdrawn business must be made available to the membership. The presiding officer may accept otherwise qualified motions and reports submitted after the deadline, but all such motions shall be placed at the end of the agenda. So, is there any debate on this amendment to the Constitution? Seeing none, is there any objection to, uh, <laughs> <laughs> there are hands. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Jerry Lohr. I don't think of myself in the third person, and I don't care if anybody else does. Uh, just nitpicking a microphone. Talk to the microphone, please. Nitpicking and flyspecking, but elsewhere we have con concerned ourselves with revising the text to always do things in days. So why are we doing things in weeks in the middle? I would move to amend the two weeks to be in days, just for consistency. So you would like that to be 14, 14 days instead of two weeks? Is there any objection to this change? Seeing no objection, the motion is amended, so it says 14 days instead of two weeks. Uh, Jerry, can you bring your badge up? 17, 13. No, no, no. Okay. Okay. We'll spell your name for the minutes. Are there, uh, is there any?
there any further uh, debate on this? LOHR for the last name. Uh, F2. Oh, there's uh, over on the left. successfully handled by the standing rules. Me being someone from the great state of Oklahoma, I am familiar with having constitutions with having religiously a lot of things in them that don't need to be there. And so my question is, what is the impetus for actually making this change and putting something into the constitution that is currently quite successfully handled under the standing rules? We had a, oh, sorry, my speech? Uh, certainly. Linda Denhoff, we had a problem where a motion was made and withdrawn, and I believe the standing rule was created after that. Okay. I could be wrong, but we wanted to we wanted to codify it because not everybody reads the standing rules. Uh, if I can speak briefly, I mean, putting it in the Constitution makes it harder to change. Uh, it makes it uh, more binding. The standing rules can be suspended easily uh, well, by, uh, and uh, much more easily, whereas the Constitution takes two years to change. So it seems to me reasonably a matter of opinion as to whether one would prefer it in one place or the other, and people may wish to uh, factor that into how they vote. Uh, way, that didn't, that what I said was uh, not defensive, and, you know, biased. Uh, well, there is somebody who wishes to speak. Yeah. Mark, yeah. Okay. Martin may want to speak. Uh, Mark, do you want to speak? Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. Go ahead. Mr. Chairman, two things. First of all, the uh, another reason for this provision is that it refers to committee reports. We do not want to have references to committee reports in the standing rules because there are committees that are created by the Constitution and we want something in the Constitution that has a similar level of precedence to the committees. Second, and I will yield to the, a member of the nitpicking and fly second committee to ask for this because it's a question to the chair. Is it the intent of the nitpicking and fly second committee to bring a corresponding standing rules change to the Chi-Con business meeting should we give this first passage today? Uh, maybe I should have relinquished the chair. The, uh, I would assume that what would happen is the, the nitpicking and vice president committee would recommend the removal of the parallel language in the standing rules uh, after ratification uh, in chi -Con. but uh, there has been no specific discussion in the nitpicking and vice president committee of doing that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Cliff Brown looks like we have to speak. Well, Cliff got to be first. Cliff, I'm just putting my chance. Sorry. Cliff Brown, Mark, just because I uh, like to speak, it didn't mean I didn't want to speak as well. That's okay. Um, my, I just have one question here. I know that the rules state that, you know, late like, business have to agree to be together. By including this in the Constitution, since this is, we cannot suspend the Constitution with the suspension of rules, would that prevent the business meeting from at its discretion bringing up a business earlier in the agenda if it is necessary? Uh, it's my opinion that it would not. However, I could understand why that might cause some uh, confusion on somebody's part. Um, There are also, I believe, uh, provisions in Roberts which effectively say that something that's in your constitution, which is in the nature of a standing rule, can be suspended the same way a standing rule can, even though it's in your constitution, uh, unless there's clear provision to the contrary. And the nature of the rule should be taken into account. 
Are there further speeches on the? Uh, uh, I well, yeah, the floor isn't up back. Jim Lyon Weber. Um, I'd like to make a motion to uh, amend by placing the word initially between shall and be, so it says all such motions shall initially be placed at the end of the agenda. Is there any objection to this change? Seeing none, it's amended so that it says all such motions shall be initially placed at the end of the agenda. Further speeches? Lisa? Call the question. Is there a second? Second. second. All those who still wish to speak, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? Boy. Oh, okay. Uh, sorry. Um, all those in favor of calling the question, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed? There being two thirds in favor, uh, the question is called on F2 as amended. So it now says 14 days instead of two weeks. And it says initially placed at the end of the agenda. Uh, so the word initially has been inserted, but otherwise the text is as in the agenda. Okay, give me a chance to catch up here. The secretary asked for a brief pause to catch up, so we will pause briefly. <coughs> Okay. Okay. Uh, proceeding under the uh, call of the question, all those in favor of the amendment of the Constitution, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed? I believe the ayes have it. Okay. Call for the vote. All those in favor, please stand. One. Okay. All those opposed, please stand. Statue of Liberty play, uh, which has to do with changing section 2.7 concerning uh, membership information pass along, uh, which is current in relationship to the uh, Hugo voting and uh, nomination. Uh, sure. Uh, so done. Uh, since it got a little bit clumsy once or twice, could the chair, when we start debate, invite the makers of a motion to go first before going to wide open? Because sure. Yeah, take the last one. I think our motion waiting to go first. 
Okay, I, I will uh, endeavor to remember that to call for the maker of the motion uh, to speak first. Uh, I'm not sure if that would be in case of a, well, I guess if a committee report it might be the chair, which is me, but that makes it messier. Um, but I would be, at least in this one, I will decline to speak. Uh, well, I, I have another this morning. Picking yeah. 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 Okay, anyway. So uh, currently, the Constitution says within 90 days uh, after a uh, after a vote, on, the administering committee shall, except where prohibited by local law, forward the committee uh, forward its best information as the name and contact information, uh, postal addresses of all its Worldcon members uh, to the committee of the next Worldcon. So the change is. Uh, so that now we would read, within 90 days after a will con, the administering committee shall, if we're prohibited by local law, forward to the committee of the next will con its best information as to the names and contact information of its will con members who have given permission for that data transfer, and only for the purpose for which permission to use that data was given. So it restricts the transfer further, but not just local law, but also based on the permission of the uh, person whose information is being transferred. Uh, there's text on page 36 of your agenda uh, explaining uh, more about this. Uh, and I will, uh, I just said, uh, somebody wish to speak to the nitpicking and picking committee on this? Uh, I see not that anybody wishes to speak uh, to address the, uh, but. This, this was proposed because GDPR, the, the, there's the interpretation that since each Worldcon committee is a distinct entity, that without this amendment, it's difficult to pass on the information from one committee to another. And why would you buy a membership and vote in the Yugos and then um, not have the right to nominate in the following year's convention? So that's what this is trying to clear up, that we, that we can pass along the information. Are there any further speeches uh, on this? Um, or did I misstate that? I'm, I'm so confused right now. Jerry Barr. Um, I would like to again propose an amendment to substitute applicable for local. That's, that's a uh, unnecessarily and inappropriately restrictive term. Okay, as proposed to replace local by applicable, is there any, Oops. so instead of local law, say applicable law, is there any objection to that change? See there's no objection, is there a second? Uh, I can't the okay. Is there a second for the amendment? Second. second. Moved and seconded to replace local with applicable. Uh, point of yeah. To replace local with applicable. Laws that apply. Uh, the word applicable, however you wish to pronounce it. Uh. Sure, state your name. Joshua Crandall, he, him. Um, would this be a lesser change, or would the, or would it have um, adopted this amendment um, to labor application? This is a new uh, amendment, so it doesn't make any difference. I stand corrected. Thank you. Any further speeches on the amendment to change local to applicable? Seeing none, all those in favor of the change, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed? The ayes have it, and the motion has changed, so it says applicable law, so it's basically local strikes is picking out and but applicable is inserted. Give me a point. second. What? Give me a second. Well, sure, the secretary wishes a moment to uh, catch up. Okay. Okay. Move to call the question. Second. second. It's been moved and seconded to call the question. All those who still wish to. Yes. Uh, Technically, the amendment was in against. No, 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 I don't know. I can answer. Uh, I, I, there, there, there is a requirement in our rule that we have to have speeches on either side usually before we proceed. Substantive debate on both sides. Is there a speech against this amendment? Yeah. 
against this motion that the constitutional amendment of it, that is S3. Mr. Chairman, I believe that this is, oh, this is Kent Bloom, and uh, I believe that this motion is an attempt to uh, lawyer a number of very complicated issues, including conflicts of laws, which we just made applicable. And frankly, I have no idea how we de 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 determine or define applicable law in this particular situation of multinational and multi-state uh, privacy issues. So while I am generally opposed to this because I think we shouldn't be writing this kind of thing into the Constitution, I'm specifically opposed to our trying to be uh, anticipate what, what, what the law is going to be or what is appropriate for privacy purposes. GDPR does not require any of the things that people are saying it requires because the, the existing world cons are acting as in the ordinary course of business for the, for the, for the purposes of either uh, and acting as an agent or a uh, I don't know, a partner would probably be the best idea, best description. And therefore, we don't need this. It's not a good idea. It might be different next year. And I think we should vote this down. Go, uh, Lisa. Lisa? I want to speak for. OK. Uh, Lisa Hayes, applicable laws besides this empowers the individual member to say yes or no to pass that information along, empowering the individual member of WISPIS, and I uh, wish to endorse this uh, amendment. This, this uh, new piece. Move to call the question. Second. Move and second to call the question. Uh, all those in favor, please. Uh, oh, sorry, all those who wish to speak, please raise your hand. I see nobody will then proceed to a vote. All those in favor of item F3 as amended, please raise your hand. Thank you, all those opposed. The ayes have it and F3 is passed and will come up for ratification next year. Item F4. Wait a minute. Um, okay. Short title, Shut Up and Take Money. Uh, just at the preliminary business meeting, the time. Oh. Ah, good idea. Thank you. There we go. Okay, we're on F4. We're on F actually F.4.1 because at the preliminary business meeting, uh, the debate time was set at 12 minutes and an amendment by substitution uh, to replace this by uh, the item F4 by F.4.1 was adopted. So the 4.1 is to add text to the end of section 4.4.1 of the Constitution to state that every site selection ballot shall include the following statement. Open quote, by casting a site selection ballot, I agree to the communication of my name and address provided hereon as directed by the Lewis's Constitution. Close quote. I might point out that the, this may sound similar to the previous motion, Previous motion had to do with a Worldcon forwarding information about its membership uh, in general. And this has only to do with forwarding membership that is specifically written on a site selection ballot. So they are different. The preliminary business meeting, as we said, a time limit of uh, six minutes for this uh, <coughs> business. No, 12, sorry. 12 minutes. Oh, 12, it was six minutes I confused. It was the time limit is at 12 minutes. Um, does, uh, Could I ask the chair to state the text as it currently exists? There is currently, well, uh, it's an amendment to 4.4. No, the, the, the amended text. This simply adds text, OK? Uh, the current. Uh, 4.4.1 says site selection ballots shall include name, signature, address, and membership spaces to be filled in by the voter. Each site selection ballot shall list the options none of the above and no preference and provide for write-in votes 
after the bidders and with equal prominence. The supporting membership rates shall be listed on all site selection ballots. So basically, this is a section of the Constitution specifying the form of site selection ballots. And this would add, require that a notation be added on that form. Uh, said, and to read again the text of the amendment, uh, it, would, it adds to that section one more uh, sentence, which is every site selection ballot shall include the following statement, quote, by casting a site selection ballot, I agree to the communication of my name and address provided hereon, on the, that this is a statement on the ballot, so it's still on the ballot, uh, as directed by the list of constitution. So it would add a statement to the ballot. And hopefully that's clear enough. Are there further questions about what this is intending to do? Okay. You have a question? Sorry. Yes, Perry and Marie, she, her. So the 4.1.3 under F4, is that still in effect? Because it doesn't say in the Constitution that you're going to give that data transfer to somebody else. It just says put the statement on the ballot. Four point four point three doesn't say anything. What, what do you? What do you if it replaced the proposal for four point one point three, then it just says as directed in the Constitution, but the Constitution doesn't actually direct it. Wait a sec. The that's not true. Hold on a second. Okay, so first of all, 4.4.3. Yeah. Uh, there is a section here that I'm looking for. Jared Dashoff, he, him. Uh, I was not able to, thank you. I was not able to be here the other days, but there are actually two issues um, at point here. One, the Constitution currently does not actually direct the administering committee to transfer information or addresses on the voters to the winning bid. That is a norm, and we do that because we do it, um, but it just says give them the money. Uh, so that is why the amendment was made to 4.1.3, and I would think that as amended, both sections would have to change rather than just striking out any change to 4.1.3 and adding in what is currently at F.4.1. There's nothing being struck out. Okay? It's currently proposed to add text to uh, 4.4.1. Right, but we, as the amendment was made the other day, it was basically to replace the additions to 4.1.3 okay. with what is currently in the agenda as F.4.1. Right. But I think both need to be handled, and I would move to include, or to amend the motion to include both the additions uh. and F.4.1. Point of privilege, what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, let, me, uh, let me explain. There's been a suggestion to make a change. Uh, so the proposal is to change this by to also insert some text in 4.1.3. Uh, so this current uh, the current motion is to change, to add text to 4.4.1, and the proposal uh, is to also add text to 4.1.3, which would be, uh, it currently reads, the current Wolcott Committee shall administer the voting, collect the advanced membership fees, and turn over those funds to the winning committee before the end of the current Wolcott. And the proposal is to, in addition to adding the text to 4.4.1, to also insert text there, so it would say, the current World Con Committee shall administer the voting, collect the advanced membership fees, and turn over those funds and the names and contact information of the, all the site selection voters to the winning committee before the end of the current World Con. 
which has been the universal practice. Uh, so is there a second for that amendment? I already seconded it. Oh, sorry. Okay. Okay, hold on, hold on. I need to get the, the new wording for 4.3 from you. It's 4.1.3. 4.1.3. On page 36 of the agenda. It's, it's, it's most of the text on page 36. Um, <clears throat> First of all, I don't have the agenda in front of me. Number two, he's just, we're adding, I'm not sure what we're okay, adding. Uh, it's a little more complicated than that. So it's to add the text to be inserted there, except the one I crossed out. So it's just the part about transferring but to the winning, okay. not the part about permission. Okay. There'll be a brief pause, is that correct? Uh, what? Yeah, yes. Please state your committee order. Uh, ben Gallo, details. Uh, I believe that this is a case where having amended by substitution that text out of the proposal, that this can only be brought back onto the floor through a uh, reconsideration. Well, Uh, you're probably correct. However, I would could like prefer to consider this as a uh, motion to suspend the rules and amend it in this way. Uh, I'm still confused. <laughs> the, the current, the current uh, business item, Linda, the current business item before it is to add the text to the 4.4.1. Order! order. This is the same the key item. So that it's in addition to that. All right, I understand that, but where are we putting this, the wording in 4.1.3? Don't kill yourself. Where it goes right there. Where you're staring, what you're staring at. 4.1.3. Yeah, yeah. Where is it? Right there. Okay. 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 That you haven't crossed out. Oh, okay. Two. Into 4.1.3, exactly as shown here. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. That, that's where I was getting confused. Uh, Mr. Chair, yes. uh, having voted on the prevailing side, I therefore uh, move for reconsideration to then let this go back on. I believe that will be a more complicated procedure than to simply move to suspend the rules and amend. Second. Which are you seconding? Is there a second to motion reconsider? Okay. Well, I have to admit that I believe the uh, the amendment is. Uh, so the standing rules provide that second order amendments are not allowed except when uh, there is a motion to. Uh, amend by replacement. Since that was done in this point in this case, my opinion is that second order amendments are still allowed, and therefore the motion to amend to add material uh, to this F.4.1 from the agenda is in order. And that is my ruling as the chair. Uh, it's been moved and seconded to make that amendment. I'm not sure if the secretary has cleared that up yet. Yeah, parliamentary inquiry. Yes. Kevin Stanley, he had, uh, honorable chair, did the chair entertain the motion to reconsider? I believe not. Okay, that's all I was asking. I couldn't tell. Yes, I did not. I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out from the, from the video. What is privilege or policy uh, after the amendment is disposed of, either adopted or not, it would still be in order to move to reconsider. Uh, but, uh, yes? Still, Jared Dash on PM. Would it be simpler, now that I've confused everyone, to move to refer all of F.4 to committee to report back to the Shai Khan A business meeting? Or ask to, to refer it to back to the nitpicking and fly specking committee with the remit to present such an amendment or an amendment on this matter 
to the Shikon 8 business meeting? Second. Second. I have been moved and seconded to refer the matter to the nitpicking and supply specking committee. Uh, it would go with the currently pending amendment. Uh, this prevails uh, is higher priority than the amendment. <coughs> is there anybody who wishes to debate whether the, the uh, item F.4.1 with the pending amendment should or should not be referred to the nitpicking and supply specking committee? Yes? Come up to the microphone, please. Is there someone speaking? Okay. Uh, someone, well, I asked anybody who wants to speak to the motion to uh, refer to committee. I my right to speak in favor. This is a speech against referral. Here. Greg Richards, E. Pim, uh, Honorable Chair. This is very quickly to say, having passed the previous amendment, referring this amendment to committee would create a disjunct in how the two sets of information are handled. We need to resolve this one. Is there a speech in favor of referral to the Nitpicking and Fly Spectrum Committee? Yes, then. <coughs> ben Yellow, he, him. Uh, we are in a tangled parliamentary uh, situation. <laughs> uh, I regret to say that even I am slightly confused, although I think I can work my way through it. I suspect that other members of the assembly may be equally confused. I think dumping it off to a committee and letting them clean up what it is we're trying to do is going to be the only way to get us out of this mess. Uh, further speeches against the Borough Committee? Yeah. Marianne Lurie, she, her. Uh, I'm not opposed to referring it to committee. I just don't think this is the, pro the correct committee to refer it to. Uh, I think there are substantive issues, not just nitpicking and fly specking, that need to be addressed. And so I don't know what committee to refer it to, but I don't think nitpicking and fly specking is the proper one. You could move to amend the motion to refer so as to uh, change the committee. You could say a new committee. Yeah, sure. I, I, I uh, move to amend it to refer it to a committee specifically just for this issue. Uh, is so there a second? Okay, it's been moved and seconded to amend the motion to refer. So it's to use a new committee rather than picking a fly spec. To report that next year. Does anybody wish to debate that? Seeing none, all those in favor of changing it from the picking a fly spec committee to a new committee, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed? Ah, it's very, I think. Uh, Serpentine vote. <laughs> All those in favor of changing from nitpicking and fly specking to a new committee, please stand. One. Uh, is it a question, a question, a question I restate this. What would we, there's a motion pending to refer to committee, and uh, there's a now motion to change, uh, there's a motion pending to refer to the nitpicking and fly specking committee, and there's about the immediately pending motion is a motion to amend that to refer it to a new committee rather than the nitpicking and fly specking committee. So if you think it should be referred, if you think that if it is referred, it should be referred to a new committee, then you should vote yes. If you think if it is referred, it should be referred to the nitpicking and fly specking committee, you should vote no. Uh, do you need further explanation? Okay, all those in favor of changing the nitpicking by second to a new committee, please stand up. One. Two. Three. Four. Fourteen. 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 
The vote is 26 in favor and 21 against. The motion to refer is amended to refer to a new committee. I nominate myself as chair. Uh, <laughs> we, have, we have not as yet referred to the, but he uh, adopted the motion to refer. Uh, is there any further speeches on whether or not it should be referred to a committee at all? So second. Second. All those who still wish to speak on the question of referral, please raise your hand. No. Seeing none, uh, is there anybody opposed to uh, referring? Okay, I guess by unanimous consent, by unanimous consent, it's referred to the to the to the uh, new committee. Uh, people should come up to me after this meeting at that table and uh, volunteer for the new committee. Committee to be appointed by the chair? Yes. That's the default of the committee to be appointed by the chair. Okay. Okay. Next item of business is short title of matter of days, oh, of which the preliminary business meeting said a time limit of six minutes. Um, and this replaces some references in the Constitution to months with days by using a conversion rate of 30 days per month. So the text is on page 37 of the agenda. Uh, anybody, I guess, I'm not sure who the original maker of this was, uh, but is anybody who wishes to speak in favor? Anybody who wishes to speak against? Is there any objection to adopting this amendment to the Constitution? Seeing none, it's approved and we'll Call for ratification next year. Uh, next item is uh, F6 on page 38 of the agenda. Short title, Non-Transferability of Voting Rights. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was not meant to be an editorial comment. So, I guess I'm going to read the current text in the Constitution, uh, which is basically 1.5.123 1 and 5, give four. So currently it says, each Rolcon shall offer supporting and attending memberships. The rights of supporting memberships of the Rolcon include the right to receive all of its generally distributed publications. The rights of attending members of a Worldcon include the rights of supporting members plus the right of general attendance at said Worldcon and at the list of business meetings held thereat. And 1.5.5 says voters have the right to convert to attending membership in the selected Worldcon within 90 days of its selection for an additional fee set by its committee. This fee must not exceed four times the site selection fee and must not exceed the difference between the site selection fee and the fee for new attending memberships. So the amendment would change that. So it read, each Worldcon shall offer wishless memberships and attending supplements. Uh, the rights of wishless members of a Worldcon include the right to receive all of its generally distributed publications. Wishless memberships held by natural persons may not be transferred except that in case of death of a natural person holding a wishless membership it may be transferred to the estate of the, of the decedent. Uh, the rights of WISA's members who have an attending supplement of a Worldcon, including the rights of, include the rights of WISA's members, plus the rights of general attendance at said Worldcon and the WISA's business meeting held thereat. Voters have the right to purchase an attending supplement in the selected Worldcon within 90 days of its selection for an additional fee set by its committee. This fee must not exceed four times the site selection fee and must not exceed uh, the price of an attending supplement for new attending members. So uh, this is from the non-transferability committee. And I believe the chair is here. I wish perhaps to make a statement in favor of perhaps provide further explanation on it. Any case. Uh, 
Um, there's some technical language where I simply change the word supporting membership to WISPIS membership to make it clear what we're talking about. Substantively, what this does is that it says that you join the society and having joined the society, you gain certain voting rights. And that part is not transferable. As with other professional societies, you get to attend the annual meeting of the society, specifically the Worldcon, by paying an additional fee. Your, your choice to join the society is irrevocable. Basically, you should only join the society if you believe that that's an important thing for you. On the other hand, your decision to attend may be affected by commercial considerations. It might be affected by your job situation. Lots of reasons to either attend or not attend. And if you <coughs> have purchased the attending <coughs> supplement, which is the same as we normally think of as converted to an attending, then that additional fee, the difference between the what you think of as the old supporting and attending, that part is freely saleable. It means that your voting rights stay with you no matter what because you join the society and you get to keep those voting rights. Administratively, it makes life much simpler. Uh, many past administrators have said, keeping, trade, keeping track of chain of custody of who gets to vote what uh, can be a bit of a nightmare. Uh, it is also true that right now, for example, if you transfer your membership that your site selection ballot, the first one you cast is what counts. On the other hand, your Hugo ballot, the last one counts. So if you transfer your membership right now, your initial site selection vote counts, and the new guy gets to override all of your Hugo choices. Let's try and keep things as simple as possible and not try and confuse the membership. So, Basically, there's a bunch of technical wording in there, but philosophically what it says is voting and attendance are separated. Voting, you get to keep for life. Attendance, you can resell anytime you feel like. Is there a fees against? Yeah, it's fine. John Lorenz, we have, for years we've been trying to, for years we've been trying to make Worldcons more open and easier to understand for new members. This uh, proposal is, uh, puts up a very opaque and confusing picture of how the Worldcon operates, and new people are not going to understand what's happening. Uh, I don't think it's needed. I've handled pre-reg for a Worldcon myself. It's not that difficult to handle these things, and I do not think that most of the folks that are attending Worldcon are WISPAS Society members first in their mind. They are people coming to Worldcon. They will not understand what this means. Is there a further speech in favor? Kevin Stanley, he had. I respect my honorable colleague who just spoke. It is an understandable point. But perhaps they should be more interested. 
something that I know I have resented is an ongoing attempt to commoditize membership or to our society into the form of a ticket. We should not be selling tickets. Turning the, if that's what we want, okay, maybe that's what we should do. We should create a board of directors to run Wispus Inc. and it can order a Worldcon to create a convention to have a big show and sell tickets to it. But I don't think that's a good idea. If that's me, we need to make it a little bit more clear to the people who are participating here Outside this room, at the rest of this event, that they are buying memberships in an organization, they are joining a club. Well, then so be it. Let's do that. I'm in favor of this proposal. Are we speaking okay. against? Yeah. Frank Richards, Steve Hill, and Mr. Chairman, I move to amend the motion. Uh, such that the motion shall also delete the word attending, uh, which is the penultimate word of section 1.5.5, because at the moment this would leave that uh, phrase standing uh, for new attending members. However, this motion on the whole, if it passes, would delete the concept of an attending membership. Uh, is there any comment by the maker uh, as to whether this would be acceptable? Uh, uh, is there any objection to this change? There's an objection. So, uh, you do need, you do, yeah, so if there's an objection, you certainly need a second. So it's moved and seconded to strike the next to last word. So it's say, uh, would end with for new members rather than for new attending members. Um, is there, a, we have had a, a technical speech in favor. Is there a speech against this change? Seeing none, is there any objection to the change? Do uh, yes, yes. you object to the change? Do you wish to speak against it? Doesn't wish to speak against it. Very well. All those in favor of the change will proceed to a vote since there's nobody wishes to speak. All those in favor of the change, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed? I give the ayes have it. And the penultimate word, attending, is stricken. Okay, give me a second. Sure. Uh, you can speak next, uh, sir. Uh, the next thing would be a speech again. Yes, Perry Ann Marie, still she okay. Um So there's a I have a couple of issues with this. Uh, the first is that Mr. Chairman, this should be a speech in favor. Oh, sorry. That amendments are speeches against. Okay. Uh, no, amendments are not a speeches against. Yes, they are. I, I rule that amendments are not speeches against. I challenge the ruling of the chair. Is there a second? Oh, <laughs> is there a second? <laughs> there is. Okay. We move it. Ah. Okay. Sure. Uh, it's been moved and seconded to appeal the decision of the chair that amendments are not. Um, speeches against. Uh, I would like to explain my ruling. Um, amendments have come in a wide variety, uh, but we have traditionally not treated them as speeches against. Uh, it can be as much as changing a grammatical error with no uh, real effect in the intent or the no change in the effect of the motion, or it can be uh, as large as inserting the word not so as to uh, make it have entirely the opposite. The actual you know, presentation of the amendment is usually considered to be neutral, divided on, equally on both sides. Then you have pro-con timings for the, uh, for the debate on the amendment. Um, this has been the way we've traditionally done things. And uh, the, uh, so they, they, there can be amendments which are by people who are very much in favor of what the main motion is and uh, believe that their amendment will strengthen and further the accomplishments. So the claim that in, gen that in general amendments must be negative or opposed, uh, this seems to be completely fallacious. So I have ruled that amendment is not a speech against. Is there somebody who wishes to speak on the other side of this question?
Lisa paddled, she, her. It has been repeated over and over at business meeting after business meeting that intent does not matter, that an amendment is, by definition, hostile to the original motion. Thank you. Is there any further speech in favor of the ruling of the chair? Move the call to the Who seconded to call the question on the appeal of the decision of the chair? All those still wishing to speak, please raise your hand. Seeing none, we will proceed to a vote. Uh, all those uh, who wish to have the ruling of the chair sustained as the judgment of the assembly, please raise your hand. Thank you. All of those of the other opinion, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and the ruling of the chair is sustained as the judgment of the assembly. <coughs> change the, those provisions as, as concerning the timing of when you might purchase either an attending supplement or attending, convert to attending membership, whichever of those two things from the current constitution. So if there's a flaw in this, it's a flaw in the current constitution. Yeah. So, uh, I guess I believe we're call, next would be a speech against uh, behind you, Ken.
because it talks about, uh, you know, like you're talking about how voting rights would stay with the original person. Does that include in person voting rights? It's not clear to me how this is supposed to work. Uh, so it seems like maybe this needs a little more work. The idea okay. is that uh, you, if you just purchase an attending supplement and have nothing else, then you uh, could actually do anything with that. You have to purchase a WISDOS membership as well. Which is, uh, so that's so. So in effect, yes, he would not be allowed and to. So I mean, you, you might already own a so, so the business man is going to need to figure out how to handle that. Kind no, of no. If, they, if you can attend, the, you can't attend the convention without the WISDOS membership and an attending supplement. Uh, where, uh, Questions about it, but I think questions that count as please again, uh, because it seems like this needs some more work. Uh, okay. And when you said about needing the WISPRIS membership, but I thought that you could sell your attending supplement so someone could, could come to the convention. If they're also a WISPRIS member. But anyway, I, I don't wish to engage in debate. There is a speech can, I, can I get your name, bitch, sir? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Spelling purposes. I have opinion that this is confusing. A speech in favor of the amendment to the Constitution. Yeah. Kendall, Kendall Bullock, E-N-D-A-L-L-B-U-L-L. -L. Okay, great, I got it right. Thank you. Like it's related to the meaning, and it, it, I, I agree that this does not require that the selected convention att sell attending supplements after 90 days. And just as selected uh, conventions right now are not required to sell attending memberships after 90 days after the site selection, it doesn't change that. Um, I think that it's unclear in this. It provides certain rights. It doesn't. It doesn't say they don't have other. They don't might not be able to do things beyond those. It just. It says that they have that this is the minimum period of time during which either attending supplements in the new wording or attending memberships in the old wording has to be available. Most conventions sell attending memberships more than 90 days after. Continue to sell attending memberships more than 90 days after the site selection. So one would guess that most world conventions would continue to sell attending supplements more than 90 days later. But this has no effect on that time. This changes the terminology. I think it means that I'm not sure Please raise your hand. 
Thank you. Uh, good number. Uh, all those in favor of calling the question, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed? I believe there's more than two thirds in favor. Being more than two thirds in favor of the question is called. And I'll vote on this. Uh, item F6, Amendment to the Constitution, which is coming up to vote for the first time. It has been modified and that the penultimate word attending has been deleted from it. All those in favor of this constitutional amendment, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed? We will do a serpentine vote. All those in favor, please stand. being 35 in favor and 22 opposed, the motion is adopted, and this will occur, will occur at the Shikon business meeting for ratification. Uh, there is one remaining item of business, which is item F7, best audio book. The preliminary business meeting Preliminary business meeting decided on a 16 minute time limit for this. Mr. Chair? Yes? With your indulgence, I would like to move for a purpose to the Hugo study, the Ward study committee. Okay. Good. Moved and seconded to refer this amendment to the Constitution. Point of order. Yes. Yeah. Oh. It's the point of order. Yes. Yeah. Would the President be here for There hasn't been a speech on either side. Uh, I'm very good at speaking. What I'm asking. I should not have recognized the speaker. Uh, the, the maker of the motion to have priority in, in speaking uh, first to it. I was just explaining the motion and was uh, interrupted by the member who tried to move, move to refer to committee. So that the maker of the motion should speak. Thank you. Okay. Michelle Okay. Okay. See me after. The audio book tradition is the original storytelling tradition. It is the performative voice telling of stories. And unfortunately, the audio book is not being recognized by the Hugos in the way we would love to see it come to the forefront. There are performers who are in their booths every day, reading words, creating performances to give people the chance to hear them, whether that be a book that is word for word from the text, an original work that does 
Speech in favor of a vote. Yes, then for me. C O B B. No, the card. One L in the shell. Okay, thank you. Second. Uh, Second. I, I, 
Or anyone on the live stream that was the most new emergency in ADA? Right. Uh, there are, I would like the indulgence to this call for announcements. I believe I've believe been aware, aware of at least one announcement. Uh, so, uh, is there somebody who wish to make an announcement? Uh, there's no objection. Kevin Stanley, again. This time I am appearing before you as the senior officer of the Mark Protection Committee present here. Uh, the NPC would otherwise be meeting very, very late tomorrow afternoon. Unless I can find a better room, I've got to go talk to programming about it, the Mark Protection Committee will thus have to meet in this cavernous space after what is scheduled for 9.30 tomorrow morning. Which leads to my second announcement that the former Worldcon chairs no, not the all Worldcon chairs photo session is scheduled for this spot right behind me at 9.30 tomorrow morning. So we will not have to worry so much about having a business meeting right after, but the chair's photo will be in here. It is a photo and video session. You get an opportunity to photograph Worldcon chairs in their natural environment. <laughs> <laughs> Come and take your photos and shoot your video, and then after that, we uh, would uh, have the Mark Protection Committee either here or at another location. And uh, just a moment. Quick inquiry. Can we get David after our good commentary? I can't. I can't. Honorable Chair, I did not yield for questions. <laughs> I would like one other thing, personally. I would like us to, and I ask unanimous consent, that we thank our part operator for the hard work.
this is not very loud. Kaylee Rose. Okay. All right, whatever. I'll scream. Kaylee Rose. She, her. I was asked to thank um, Lisa Hayes. You just did. Okay. Well, you get extra thank you. Who are you? Thank you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, further, further announcements. There's another one. Also. Thank you, everybody. We worked on this. So specifically, thank you, Pam And everybody else. In the group here, we've been working on handling intricate matters. So I think that covers thank you, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I think that's about it. Is there any objection to adjourning? I declare the business meeting of the 79th World Science uh, Society Convention, sorry, adjourned to Senate.